All right, friends, this is it. This is the last lesson. This is the last piece of new learning that's going to come to you. So just settle in. <sighs> so sad. Our semester is just about done. Oh, no, no. Consider the following. Consider the following. So let's pretend that you have some polar curve. Some polar curve where R is a function of theta. And you're interested in finding the area inside from some angle alpha to some other angle beta. Let's pretend that you're interested in finding this area. When you do this in Calc 1, when you're looking for an area, you break area up into rectangles. Because in Calc 1, you're working your way across the horizontal axis, and one of the easiest ways to break things up is to do with vertical line segments. That does not work here. Because what you have instead is this like sweeper arm thing that's sweeping out an angle. So if you were to stop it at various intervals, you'd stop it here and here and here and here and then there. Well, what shapes do you get as a sweeper arm moves? Well, if we assume that this radius stays the same all the way across, you get a sector of a circle. And if we assume that this radius stays the same all the way across, you get a sector of a circle. And we, if we assume this radius stays the same all the way across, you get a sector of a circle. And if we assume that this radius stays the same all the way across, you get a sector of a circle. And similarly here. So the area inside is approximately equal to the sum of n sectors where the area of a sector, and you picked this up either in pre-calc or IB or common core geometry or whatever, is one half times the radius for that particular sector squared times theta, the, the change in theta on that little subinterval. Well, if you had me for calc 1, then you know what happens here. We make the sectors smaller and smaller and smaller. There are more and more and more of them. It fills the space. And when it fills the space, when the number of sectors goes to infinity, what do we have? We have that area is an integral you know that Riemann sums become integrals from this angle to that angle. One half is still one half, radius squared is still radius squared, and delta theta becomes d theta. This is how we find area in polar coordinates. So what is that? Oh, not yet. So what does that mean? Well, that means that if I have this curve, this is a cardioid because it resembles a heart. If I'm interested in this area, so the curve is 1 minus cosine theta, and I'm interested in this area, how do I find that area? Well, area is an integral of 1 half r squared d theta from where to where. So we imagine the sweeper arm. In fact, we don't have to imagine the sweeper arm. We can have a sweeper arm. And that sweeper arm is going to, oh, can I? Yes, I can. So that sweeper arm is going to sweep, 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 sweep out area until right there, right? Well, if it does that, it started at the pole and it rotated until pi over 2. Well, the rest of this is just algebra. I mean, you know how to do this in theory. You expand what's in the brackets, 1 minus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta, right? I mean, you know how to do this. Now, here's the thing. I know how to integrate 1 
and I know how to integrate cosine theta. It's this thing. Isn't this that double angle hideous substitution thing? Yeah, that's one half plus one half cosine two theta, d theta. And so what is this? This is one plus a half, take an integral. This is that. And this is a u sub that we do in our head from zero to pi over two, sub in pi over two, sub in zero. Isn't that bizarre? And the answer is, it is. That's bizarre. Okay. Ah, not yet. Consider the following. Um, this curve is four plus four cosine theta. This curve is R equals six. I'm interested in this area, the area that is inside of her and outside of him. I'm interested in this area. Really, we could find this area also, but if I asked you to find this area also, I would just encourage you to start here, go to here, and double the answer. So that's what we're going to do. The area that we're interested here, I want to talk about how to set it up, because the calculus you can handle. I want to talk about how to set this thing up. It is obviously going to be some integral from zero to somewhere. How do I figure out that somewhere? Well, you set this equal to that and solve. That's high school trigonometry. I can't help with that. You've got to know high school trigonometry. You set those two equal and solve, and bam, there it is. So what are we doing? Well, we could take the area inside the red thing, but that would give us all of this. So instead, we're going to subtract out the area inside the blue thing. Well, what's the area inside the red thing? It's the integral of 1 half r squared. And what's the area inside the blue thing? The area inside the blue thing is the integral of 1 half r squared. Now, you can do this by hand if you like. You can do this with a calculator if you like. If you do it by hand, it's 18 radical 3 minus 4 pi using a very similar substitution to what we saw in here. If you do it on a calculator, you get some decimal approximation. Okay? Okay. Ah! I just give up. Uh, other thing to consider. There is a really nifty proof for why this works. I am going to leave it out. There's a really, really nifty proof. I am going to leave it out. Arc length is an integral from alpha to beta of the square root of r squared plus whatever the derivative of r with respect to theta is squared d theta. Um, just so we're clear, uh, where would this come from? We would start with the arc length integral from parametric coordinates. Take the derivative of x with respect to theta squared plus the derivative of y with respect to theta squared, big square root, whole lot of stuff simplifies inside, and you end up with this. So find the length of r equals e to the theta on 0 to pi. Now, so we're clear. That's, oh, no, it isn't. That's this. 
This is part of what's called a logarithmic spiral. So the arc length is the integral from start to stop of the square root of r squared plus the derivative of r with respect to theta squared. So what is this? Uh, this is the square root of 2e to the 2 theta. Well, what is that? Well, they're going to take out the square root of 2, because nobody wants to deal with that, and the square root of something squared is just the something. And I know how to find that antiderivative. And I know how to sub, sub, and subtract. And I have myself an arc length. Okay? Okay. So, for you to consider... Ah, not yet! For you to consider... For the curve... R equals 1 plus cosine theta... Find... The total area enclosed on 0 to 2 pi and the total arc length on 0 to 2 pi. Okay, uh, even if you just want to set up those integrals just so you know how to set them up, uh, the, the final exam is calculator active, so you're just going to be able to punch them all in, and that's that. Friends, that's our course. It has been a pleasure. I will see you in class.